Erwin Simon, who led Afria, will now take the helm of Tilray, and he joins us for a first on CNBC interview. CEO and chairman of Tilray, that's going to take a, a minute to get used to. Congrats on closing the deal, Erwin. Thank you very much, Sarah, and good afternoon. So good afternoon. What does the integration of this company look like? Tilray is big, but it never really made any money. What, what are the next steps as far as putting it all together and what you're going to do with it? So, listen, since December, when we announced this deal, we've been working on the integration. We had a third party working with us. And now it's day one and it's day go and we're ready. And, uh, you know, as we have announced, it's $80 million in synergies and savings within the first 18 months. How we bring our people together, how we bring our brands together, how we get, a, you know, a unified strategy. And last but not least is what you said, we got to make money for our shareholders. And how do we get return for shareholders? And I think one of the biggest thing is the biggest percentage of our shareholders today are retail shareholders. How do we bring institutional shareholders in this that believe in cannabis and believe in the future of cannabis? And they should because it's a hundred billion dollar opportunity. And there's not a lot of categories and opportunities out there with a hundred billion dollars of growth opportunities out there. Do, do you think it's the legalization hurdle? Do you think if it gets legalized in the U.S. that totally changes the stock ownership, it becomes more institutional? Listen, I think that's a big important part, but what Tilray brings to the party today, it's legal in Canada, and Canada's a $9 billion market there. It's legal in multiple countries in Europe in regards to medical. We can sell into the U.S. and other products that are complementary to, you know, cannabis, and with that, we'll, you know, be a good-sized company. The other thing is, listen, Sarah, a lot of consumer packaged good companies want to get into this category and they're, you know, hanging around the rim when the right time is. But legalization will have a big part. And it's not if it becomes legal in the U.S., it's just a matter of when. And Owen, uh, now that you have this fully combined entity, uh, talk to us about where you where you view things in, in five to 10 years time. Uh, do you think that Cannabis will be sold in the same way as other products uh, are, from soda to alcohol to, to any kind of consumer product, where the brand of the company selling it is as important as the asset class, as it were, of, of what's being sold? And how many years away is that moment? Listen, I, I see this, and, you know, that's part of my role, is how to transform this into a consumer packaged goods company and, you know, build it all around brands, build it around you know, distribution, build it around, you know, R&D, quality assurance, and building around consumers that want to buy your products. But Wilford, you're right. This will be sold in convenience stores. This will be sold in, in you know, mass market. This will be sold in supermarkets. This is very much similar to the alcohol industry when prohibition started. And this is the next big industry with prohibition and legalization. And how do you get products, you know, that ultimately will give you that enjoyment. How do you sell products into the adult use market? The other big thing which is different from alcohol here is the medical opportunity here. And whether it's anxiety, whether it's sleep, whether it's pain, you know, there's multiple uses. And this is not only a consumer package good company, this is a product that's going to have tremendous opportunities within the pharma world. So do, do you think now that this deal closed, we're going to see more consolidation in the industry? What, what does that look like? And, and where are you looking next? We know you're always looking for deals. So it has to be, sir. There's over 500, you know, companies in Canada, LPs in Canada. And no longer could we be perceived as a, just a Canadian LP. We're a global, you know, company today that sells in Canada, sells in the U.S., and sells in Europe. Ultimately, listen, we've shipped our first CBD products to China. We'll look ultimately, once India gets itself under control, how we sell products in there. So globalization is key. How do you build global brands? And how do you get distribution in all these different countries. And the other thing is the big consumer packaged good companies are ultimately looking at how did they get in here and got this on their radar. So you're going to see a lot of you know, consumer packaged good companies. You're going to see a lot of competition come into this industry. And where Afria or where Tilray you know, has the advantage is this here. They are participating today in recreational cannabis adult use in Canada. They are in Europe in a medical, and we have a foothold in the U.S. market. You're going to have to get used to calling yourself Tilray now, are we? Uh, it, it, it's the first day. <laughs> it I get a change. break one day, right? We so. can all stop mispronouncing Afria now, uh, now that it's Tilray. Exactly. Chairman and CEO of the new company, Erwin Simon, thank you for joining us today. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.